As Chandler Bing once said, it bodes well for me that speed impresses you. While quick reaction games sound like a bit of a niche category of board game, it's one of the first type of games that people are introduced to. After all, we've all played a game that requires players to think fast and react fast, be it snap, spoons, get down Mr. President, quick piggy jump the fence, 58 second midwife, Brazilian marbles, hanged quick drawn and quartered, Usain Bolt Monopoly, Dr. Quick Medicine Woman, Run Lola Run the board game, or that game where you have to try and slap each other's hands and I'm so bad at that one. One of the most popular quick reaction games on the market right now is Double, where you're presented with a whole bunch of symbols on a pair of cards and you have to be the quickest to find the one symbol that matches. That's all well and good, but here at Phenomenos, we're always trying to get you to push beyond the well-known. Keep your head on a swivel, because this is the collection starter, and this week we're looking at 10 quick reaction board games that aren't Double. Number 10, Jungle Speed. If there's any game on this list you've probably heard of before, it's Jungle Speed, or as we called it at university, the Drink Smasher. Oh yeah, for a lot of these games, you're going to want to put drinks somewhere else. The rules of Jungle Speed are pretty simple. You sit in a circle and place a totem where everyone can grab it. Then on your turn, you take a card from your stack and put it face up. If it matches someone else's symbols, you have to grab the totem. If colors are active and you match someone else's color, you have to grab the totem. If it's the everyone grab the totem card, you have to grab the totem. Point is, you have to grab the totem a lot, and if you fail, you take cards and you don't want cards. That's the whole game, but it's very addictive. A sudden spike in adrenaline is fun. Simple as that. A short, sharp peak of stress and then you laugh when you win, you laugh when you fail, and that's why a game like Jungle Speed has endured. Just watch your elbows. You're all oh, fuck. Number nine, layers. A relatively new game, Layers has all the clumsy fingered stress of doing a Rubik's Cube at gunpoint, but it's also one of the sweetest triumphs going when you get it right. Like most games that require you to make snap decisions, Layers is very simple, endearing, but with lots of traps, like Home Alone or talking to your mother on the phone. You get a bunch of these layers, all of them arranged in different colours and shapes, then everyone is shown an image that they have to recreate by stacking their layers on top of each other first to do it wins. It's so simple, but you'll trip up again and again until, like dealing with a magic eye picture, you suddenly go cross-eyed, enter a like state and you become untouchable. Not to get all serious and lame, but it's also really good for teaching kids about perspective, pattern recognition and visual composition. Sorry, I'll try and keep it light. Uh, but. Number eight, Ubongo. They drink it in the Congo. Sorry, I'm British and I grew up in the 90s. The Umbongo advert is seared onto my frontal cortex. Again, Ubongo seems simple at first, but it's actually quite tricky, like trying to work out if the Umbongo advert is racist now. Everyone is dealt the same 12 tiles at the start. They'll keep these throughout the game. Then each turn, everyone takes one of these puzzle boards. The die is rolled, and depending on the symbol, those are the tiles you need to use to fill all the white squares on your board. Suddenly, everyone starts trying to do a Tetris, and the person who does a Tetris the fastest shouts Ubongo takes a gem and everyone else has to resist shouting they drink it in the Congo. A brilliant and addictive little high tension puzzler that can also be played solo in case you're struggling to put together a gaming group right now. Number seven, Galaxy Trucker. Time for a game that paradoxically manages to be a bit more complicated whilst also being a lot more stupid. Galaxy Trucker is a dumb game. It is the Woody from Cheers of games. It is incredibly dumb, incredibly endearing, and neither of them should work, but they do. In Galaxy Trucker, you have to build a spaceship from spare parts, one that's capable of surviving a completely randomized and dangerous voyage across the depths of space. At the start of the game, there's a huge pile of tiles and suddenly everyone scrambles to grab bits to build their ships because everyone knows the best engineering takes place under intense intense stress. You'll frantically equip your ship with rockets, lasers, shields, power cores, storage bins for cargo until the time is up and you have to send this Frankenstein's monster wrapped in tape out into space. Then you simply have to watch through your fingers as all the ships face a shuffled deck of hazards ranging from asteroid strikes to pirate invasions, howling with agony and laughter as one tiny well-placed asteroid tears your entire ship in half. It is so stupid, but also one of the funniest games ever made. Number six, Pictomania. Telestrations is probably the best drawing game ever made, but Pictomania is definitely the most interesting. And sure, when a parent or teacher calls your idea interesting, you know what that means. But I actually mean it here. Pictomania is a really weird experience that you might absolutely love. You basically have to draw and solve a puzzle at the same time, and it bugs you the f*** out. Three cards are put out for everyone to see. Then everyone gets dealt two cards, which will lead you to your specific word. And suddenly, you're off. Everyone starts drawing their word at the same time. When 
when you think your drawing is good enough, you can start guessing what other people are drawing, even as they're still drawing it. Being the first person to guess what everyone's drawing will give you more points, but, and this is genius, you can't just rush through your picture because once you start guessing, you can't draw anymore. And also, all of the subjects on your card are similar, and for every player that isn't able to guess what your drawing is, you're going to lose points. Pictionary on a knife edge, drawing a pair of swimming goggles has never been so exhilarating. Number five, Magic Maze. Have you ever wanted to hate your friends? Then play Magic Maze. I'm only kidding a little bit. Magic Maze is a really clever idea for a game, but it's also the most passive aggressive game ever designed. So you and your soon to be ex friends are trying to move four pieces through a dungeon. Pieces can move in every direction, but each direction is controlled by a different player. For example, Jules can only move pieces up, Ash can only move pieces left, and only Mo can discover new tiles, which means in order to get all four pieces to different corners of this dungeon before the time elapses, there are like eight Eight different plans in the air at any one time and all of them are waiting for you, yes you, to wake up and move the right piece. Oh and one more thing, no one can talk or point, which means that the only way to let someone like Terry know that you're waiting for her to move the yellow piece right so that you can move the purple piece past her is by banging this red totem in front of her and that gets mega annoying. High tension, stressful deadline and someone banging a bit of wood on the table in front of you is how to lose friends 101 but also it's an amazing game. You can always make new friends. Number four, Anomia. The definition of anomia is when, normally under pressure, someone becomes suddenly unable to recall everyday words or objects. You know, when you're writing a letter, for some reason you completely forget how to spell the word surprise, or pregnancy, or shotgun wedding. Anomia is a game all about, well, anomia. You sit in a circle, and like Jungle Speed, everyone takes turns flipping over one of the cards on the deck and putting it in front of them. If you ever match symbols with someone else's top card, then you have to be the first to shout out an example of what's on your opponent's card. If you do, you get their card. Whoever gets the most cards at the end of the game wins. Easy. Except no, it's not easy, because for some reason, when it's a race against time, it suddenly becomes incredibly difficult to name an ocean. What makes the game truly wonderful is that once the winner of that last standoff takes their card, if the card underneath that one matches someone else's card around the table, then another standoff begins immediately. So occasionally you get these chain reactions of people screaming and laughing and shouting, ah, yeah, yeah, because they're struggling to think of literally any fruit. Number three, Escape, Curse of the Temple. Time for another big box. You don't really hear about this game all that much anymore, but it's a classic of real-time panic decision-making. Like Magic Maze, you're all explorers moving around a slowly expanding map. This time, you're in an ancient temple filled with gems. Problem is, as is always the way, the ancient civilization who built this temple also rigged it to self-destruct at the first sign of colonial thieving dick bags. You have exactly 10 minutes before the whole place collapses, and in order to get out, you have to zip around a temple putting back all of these gems that you stole before you can escape escape out the exit. You do this by rolling dice. You need to roll these adventurer symbols to move from one tile to the next. You need to roll keys or torches to place gems back in their rightful place. But if you roll any black fate symbols, those dice suddenly become locked until either you or someone in your room rolls a gold symbol which unlocks them. So if you roll all black symbols, suddenly you are stuck and you have to scream for help until someone else drops what they're doing to come and bail you out all while the time ticks away. Turns out 10 minutes is no fun time at all, especially when Tanya keeps dropping her dice on the floor. Pull yourself together, Tanya. We're all going to die. Number two, Geistus Blitz. Or Ghost Blitz is dirt cheap and dirt good. Everyone likes dirt, right? In this tiny little box are a bunch of pieces. A white ghost, a red chair, a green bottle, a blue book, and a grey mouse. The aim of the game is simple. You turn over a card. Based on what's on the card, only one of these five items is going to be the correct one. First person to grab the right item wins the card. Most cards at the end of the game wins. But this is a little twist that's going to destroy you. If the item appears on the card as it does in real life, for example, this red chair, then the red chair is the right item item to grab. However, and this is a very big however, if the items are the wrong colour, then you have to eliminate all other items to find the remaining right one. In this example, you've got a red mouse and a green book on the card. Neither of those are correct, so you eliminate red, green, the book, and the mouse, which means the white ghost is the right item to grab. That sort of makes sense, but lies just outside of easy comprehension that you'll keep messing up over and over again until you suddenly start thinking the right way and you start destroying everyone else. Ghost Blitz is one of the best small games ever made, but again, for the love of God, everyone mind your elbows. And number one, P for pizza. 
Let's count how many times I say pizza in this entry. P for Pizza is the newest game on this list and one that's got a fair amount of buzz on the gaming scene right now. It's the latest game from Big Potato Games who specialize in making fun, light party games that just so happen to come in the coolest boxes on the market. P for Pizza, which comes in an adorable pizza-shaped box, is similar to Anomia but comes with a cool pizza-based twist. You want to be the first to build a giant pizza slice made up of small triangle pizza cards. In order to do that, you'll have to win them. Each turn looks like this a card in the middle with three categories and three pizza cards with letters attached. The first person to name an example of a category that begins with the pizza letter next to it will win that card. They take the pizza card, put it in their pizza slice, then flip the middle card over and suddenly the race is on again. A nice little pizza topping on this basic idea is that green categories are easy, yellow are medium and red are hard. If you win a green card, it can only go on the bottom row of your pizza slice, yellow can go in the bottom or middle and if you want to finish your pizza slice, you're going to have to win a red card to put it right at the top, which is a really nice system that prevents one person from running away with the whole game. Fantastic party game from a company that makes fantastic party games, and if you're looking for a hot new game to try this Christmas, this one will have your turkey-addled brain melting. And now if you'll excuse me, I've got a sudden craving for pizza and I can't think why. And that's our list. What are your favourite quick reaction games? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around. And also, why not subscribe to Phenomena for more great videos about board games? Thank you so much for watching, join Phenomenerds, and get on board.